right, guys. Happy Thursday. All right, so hopefully you've already finished the review questions. There were 10 review questions and a game to play today, and I want you to do those 10 review questions first. Do them independently, practicing as if it were the test for tomorrow. And then after you do that 10 questions and submit your answers into Edge Elastic, check over the ones you got wrong, and then you can watch this video. And I'm gonna work about five questions that are really gonna be very critical to the test tomorrow, to the quiz tomorrow, and make sure you can understand these, these questions, okay? All right, number two says, a group of 10 friends are in line to see a movie. The table shows the amount different groups will pay in all. So we, if we have three people in the group, we're gonna pay $15. Five people in the group is $25, six people, 30, and 12 people are gonna pay $60. So, oh, I'm on question number two, by the way. I skipped number one. Um, number one, the answer was 27, because you multiply by nine. Okay, that was number one. Um, number two, so we wanna see, if we have a group of people, what are we, um, what are we multiplying by to get the number, or the price of the tickets? Okay, three tickets, we're buying three tickets and we're gonna pay $15. When we buy five tickets, we're gonna pay $25. When we buy six tickets, we're gonna pay $30. And when we buy 12 tickets, we're gonna pay $60. Because if you notice, we're gonna buy 10 tickets, but 10 is not on our table. So we gotta figure out what, what is the pattern here? We're talking about patterns and we're filling in this table. Three times what is 15? Three times five is 15, so that's our constant. So it should be the same, five times five equals 25, six times five equals 30, 12 times five equals 60. So if I had 10 people and I want to take 10 people to the movies and I need to divide them a ticket and the tickets cost $5 each, then I would pay a total of $50. How much would a group of 10 pay? 50. And I don't think that, it, uh, um, I did not put the money sign. So just put 50 when you answer that question. Okay. All right. Number three. Number three, it says, um, a train moves at a constant speed of eight miles every six minutes. So we're, we've got the table and we want to fill in all of the times. Um, so I look at the table and I see three, 15, and 60 under the minutes column. Three, 15, and 60, but I don't see six minutes. And six minutes is what they give me in my information up here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my table just a little bit. Since I'm drawing my own table in my notebook, I'm going to put three, and then I'm gonna put that six minute in there, six minutes. And then I'll do 15, and then I'll do 60. And I know from this information that in six minutes, we're gonna go a distance of eight miles. All right, so let's think about that, okay? Because there is there is a constant, but the constant's gonna be a fraction. We'll get into that later. Okay, so we can't think about what six times what is eight, but I'm gonna look at the pattern on this side. I'm, I'm seeing that if I skip count by threes, three, six, all right, I get that. So what do you think in in six minutes, if I go eight miles, how far do you think I'll go in three minutes? If I cut that in half, right? Instead of traveling six, I'm gonna travel three. So instead of traveling eight, I'm going to travel four. We're gonna travel four. Okay, now, how could I figure out the rest of this? You know, I wish, I think I'm gonna erase it. I'm gonna think I'm gonna erase this. And I'm gonna add more to my table, okay? I'm gonna do three, six, nine, okay? And then I'm just gonna keep skip counting by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 15 okay? Uh, I don't know that I'll get all the way to 60. That's skip counting by threes. So I'm doing a little squiggly line. Okay, and over here I'm gonna skip count by fours. Four, eight, 12, um, 16, 20, and so now I want to figure out 60. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to use, to answer this 60 question, I'm going to go back to this 
row here, okay? If it's six minutes, I can go eight, eight miles. What do you think I can do in 60 minutes? In 60 minutes, if six goes eight miles, then 60 would go 80 miles. You got it. So on my table, I need the answer for this. If I go three minutes, I go four miles. And then 15 is the next one on my, on the assignment. In 15 minutes, I can go 20 miles. And then the last one is 60. And in 60 minutes, I can go 80 miles. That was a little tricky, a little bit tricky there. We did it, we got it. Okay, let's go on to number six. A bakery made nine cakes using three bags of flour. Um, the bakery used the same relationship between the cakes made and the amount of flour used to make each of their cakes. Now, we are supposed to find the table that correctly identifies that. We've got four tables. Which one of these tables gives us nine cakes and three bags of flour? So let's just look at it. This one, if I look at the nine and three, I'm gonna use this bright green here. This is three cakes, nine bags of flour. Is that what this is? Nine cakes, three bags of flour. Nope. All right, let's look at this one. Let's circle that nine and the three. This is nine cakes, three bags of flour. Nine cakes, three bags of flour. So that looks like a winner. Okay, so let me check the other ones. Oh, this one also says nine cakes, three bags of flour. So I need to check that one too. This one down here, if I circle the nine and the three, three cakes, nine bags of flour. So I know a and D are not the correct answer, but let me look closer at B and C. So let me see if the relationship is the same. Let me check it, okay? With this one, like, let's look at the pattern. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, okay? One, two, three, four, five. I see a pattern there. Um, that's important. Is it the same? Let's look at this. Let's look at the value of that ratio. I mean, probably need to change colors. Okay, the value of the ratio. We said the value of the ratio is when we take the, the ratio and we put it in fraction form and we simplify it. Okay, so let's simplify this. And that would be, um, I have a three in common. And so that would be a relationship of three to one. The value of that relationship would be three to one. Now, is that consistent? Okay, look, look here, three to one. What if I simplified this, six over two? If I simplified it, it would be three to one. What if I simplified this one, 12 over four? That would also be three to one. If we simplify it, if I simplify this ratio, I'm gonna divide them both by five. 15 divided by five is three. Five divided by five is one. So that's consistent, three to one. Now let's check this one. Okay, we know that nine to three, if we look at the value of the ratio, we're gonna get three to one. So is that the same here? Oh, this is seven to one. Huh, seven to one. That does not really work well for us, okay? Seven to one. Look at this one. 8 to 2, if I simplify that, I have 2 in common, that would give me 4, and that would give me 1. That's a 4 to 1 ratio. So there's a 7 to 1 ratio, a 4 to 1 ratio. This is a 3 to 1 ratio. So do you see how the ratio is changing? So this table is not consistent. Okay, so that's not going to be your answer. So the one that matches, the one that stays consistent, the one that has a constant is this one right here, answer choice B. Now we'll look at one more thing. I'm gonna erase all my, my stuff. I'm going to erase the writing. I'm probably fixing to erase the boxes too. Oh, <laughs> that is not what I wanted to happen. Let's go back. Okay, let me just leave it then. Um, I wanna look at, what if I had these, what if these were different bakers? 
and I was trying to see which cake had the most flour in it. Let's say I wanted to look at which cake had the most flour in the cake. If I did that, I'm gonna use pink, I think, or blue, let me use blue. I would look at this simplified ratio. And I wanna think about how much cake, how much flour is in each cake. So this first one, y'all yeah, gotta erase this over here. So we don't get confused. Now this was not part of your study guide, but this is gonna be on your test tomorrow, okay? Um, this was like the questions we did where um, we had the different people who were texting and they were seeing who was the slowest to the fastest. Maria, Max, Michaela, and I can't remember the last one, but anyway. It was a J name, I think, but anyway. We were trying to see who was the slowest to the fastest. And then we did another problem. We were putting juice in order. The, the most juicy flavoring to the, or the most watery flavor to the least watery flavor. So I wanna put this in order of cakes. I want a flour. So let's do uh, most flour to least flour. Most to least, okay. Um, so this would have one part cake. I'm gonna make a table. Okay, this first one, A, would have one part cake and three parts flour. Okay, that's a lot of flour in one cake. This one would have, or one cake would have three bags of flour. That's a lot of flour. This cake, we would have three cakes with one bag of flour. On this cake, we would have seven cakes using one bag of flour. And on this one, we would have one cake using seven bags of flour. <laughs> Can you imagine one cake having seven bags of flour? So obviously, this one would have the most flour, okay? This would have the most. There's seven bags of flour in one cake. I don't even know how that's possible. But then look up here, this one. This one has three bags of flour in one cake. So this would be, I guess, most, I'll say this one's number one, and this would be number two on the, the flour. And then look at these two. Three cakes share one bag of flour, seven cakes share one bag of flour. If you think about that, if you think about cooking, Three cakes, that means we're gonna take one bag of flour and split it into three equal pieces. I'm gonna put a third in one cake, a third in another cake, and a third in the last cake. But then this one, I'm gonna make seven cakes with one bag of flour. So these are gonna have the least amount of cake. So this one's gonna be in order of the most to the greatest, that one's the third amount. And then that, this one, this seven bags or, or one bag of flour divided in seven different cakes, that one's gonna have the least amount of flour. So if I wanted to put those in order, I would compare the flour to the amount of cakes. Seven bags of flour in one cake. Ugh. Three bags of flour in one cake. Still, ugh. Then this one would have one bag of flour split into three cakes. And then this last one would just have one bag of flour split into seven cakes. So that's in order from the, the most flour to the least flower. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more questions. Watch the next video for the, for the last few questions, okay? We'll stop here, then go to the next video.